Hey everyone, my name is Rui and we are here. This is going to be week number two of the ABL, the Amateur Battle League, and we are up against a uh, good gamer Glenn and I believe his Honolulu Toros. Okay, I just checked on that and that was correct. But um, this is going to be a really scary matchup, right? So he has a really hard trick room mode and it's really going to be a lot to deal with, but I have some things. Okay, so we do see the Hatterene and Didi, Melmetal, Kloitzer, uh, G Max Machamp and the Weavile. Okay, so a lot of mods that I expected. I'm going to screenshot the team now. And um, this is so okay. I kind of did expect him to want to lead off with the Ndidi and the Hatterene. That's kind of the lead that I was that I kind of had in my mind. Um, but I'm just going to look for one second as to what he left behind. So no Dusclops. No Dusclops is really interesting. No Dragology, no Pinkurchin, uh, Executor, Dragon, Flareon. So, he, so he, he definitely brought his best six, I think. But uh, to some extent, this is kind of the the situation that I would have expected. Right? I still do think that his best lead is may, might be the Hatterene and the Ndidi. And it's kind of what I had in mind when I built um, a lot of these mods. So... Um, my counter to that is the combination of this Vigavolt and this, uh, and the Surfetched. So, we're going to try to deal with it. We're going to try to do whatever we can here. Um, although it's going to be really, really difficult. Uh, we're going to see. Um, now, I have no idea what to expect. I'm not sure what those two, it's the Weavile and the Hatterene. Okay, that's interesting. So he does have fake out pressure, for sure. Now my my surfet is scarfed, but not enough to not enough to uh outspeed this Weavile here. So I'm curious. I'm curious against. A Hatterene, what kind of damage output am I looking at? Uh, not not a whole heck of a lot. So, I think I kind of have to go with the standard... Huh, I don't know what to do here. I'm at a little bit of a loss. I think I still have to try and get a Flash Cannon off on the Hatterene. Um, and hope that he tries to fake out... Yes, okay, that is huge. So, they should deny the Hatterene... Um, with a Specs Flash Cannon into the Hatterene slot. Uh, it is Focus Sash, though, which is... Probably... Oh, no, did I... Did, did that just not KO? Because I don't think anything popped. Any kind of, um... Oh, that is really problematic. Okay. Um... Well, I'm going to try to close combat into the Weavile slot, but this... But this Hatterene slot is really difficult. Did, did I just not KO? Because I... I thought I always KO'd, like, no matter what happened. Pretty much. Um, regardless, I think I have to... Just try to attack here. Uh, yeah. I, like I said, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at a little bit of a loss as to what... As to how to think about what to do. I... It switches out. Okay. So I get a flash cannon off on the Mel Metal and hopefully be able to kind of manage this Weavile. Goes for the Ice Shard. I'm not the most concerned about that. But a flash cannon will come out onto this Mel Metal. It is still specs. It still does a little bit of damage. Um, and I will be able to. <sighs> that is so crazy. I mean, I don't know how I was able to, to not take out that Hatterene. That was a specs as heck. Um, Vicavolt. I guess I got a, I, I must have gotten an incredibly low roll, I think. Unless it's naturally very especially defensive. Um, but I think, man, how do I want to do this? How do I want to do this? I think I might want to go into this and into this. 
Does that feel right to me? I think it might. I think it might. We're gonna give this a try. I don't know. I think I can stall out Trick Room enough, and then, and then, out of Trick Room, I can deal with the Hattering decently well. I'm just amazed that I got a, that I got such a low roll on that. So, so to a max HP Hatterene, that had a that had about an 81 percent chance to to Oko, and just by the looks of it, I I I'm just guessing that that was. Oh, man, I picked the wrong slot. Okay, okay, I think that's. I mean, it, it could be worse. Then th we'll take care of the Weavile a little bit. Um, but there should be two turns left after this. And man, that is just brutal. That is just brutal. So, I mean, Hatterene might be worst case scenario to, to kind of bring in here. Um, although getting Weavile out of the way is huge. There's no doubt that that's huge. There's no doubt that that's huge. Yeah, I think that's the header. No, it's the, it's the Indeedee. Okay. As the Psychic Surge comes out... I think what I... Okay. Okay. So I can very potentially get Mystical Fired here. I can very potentially get Mystical Fired here. Let me just make sure. Two turns left of Trick Room. I think... I think I might just want to steal Spike here. I don't know. Mm. Max Quake makes so much more sense to me here. And then I have to go out into something else here. I think... I think Surfetched is a lot less valuable now. I think. Um... Surfetch makes sense to me. Surfetch makes sense to me. Yeah, I think I'm base. I think I'm free to basically give up the surfetch now. I mean, I really don't want to give up the surfetch, right? If, if there's any kind of maneuvering that I could do here that would make me not give up surfetch, then I will probably do it. But um, the larger point here is kind of to try and get Santa Con in a position where I can take hits, kind of wear down the team a little bit, and allow Santa Conda to kind of do its thing, because uh, this positioning is obviously not ideal. Helping hand, okay. I mean, he can only KO one mon, which is instructive here. Okay, okay. Okay. I feel... Okay. Oh, I forgot! I completely forgot! I'm G-Max Sandblast, and not G-Max, um, and, and not... Just, um, regular Max Quake. So that's, I mean, that's honestly helpful because now I get Sandstorm damage as well as the Sandblast damage. And, um, I still have this, this, um, Surfetch on the field. Now, what, now, what, I think, I think it's honestly worth it to kind of maneuver myself around such that, such that Cleffy comes in, right? Um, because I, I could definitely see a psychic attack going into my Surfetch, and I know that he would kind of want to value taking out my... Nope, that's not a, that's not what I wanted to do, even a little bit. So I could actually also... No, I could Steel Spike into this slot. No, I have to take out the Melmetal if I can. I have to take out the Melmetal if I can. can do this and then I can go into this um, I think that's overall going to put me in the best position here because now honestly because of the way that that I interaction happened now my now my in um, indeed is a lot more valuable or not I'm sorry my my um, goes for the double iron bash but yeah we but yeah, this is a max defense clef key. Uh, with a citrus berry, no less. But um, but yeah, I'm going to end up hitting the Indeedee, which I think I targeted anyway. No, no, no. I, I changed up my target to the to the Melmetal. However, 
Wow, that did a lot more damage than I would have expected. Okay, so so I was going to say, it, it, it's probably best case scenario to keep these two mons up on the field. But now I'm not too, too sure because... Because... Uh, the Hatterene can come in. Well, no. The Hatterene can't really come in. Because of the sand. And the, twi and the dimensions are back to normal. So... Machamp can come in? Either Machamp or Clawitzer can come in, but, um... I guess whatever comes in is gonna get Thunder Wave, right? Um, Hatterene would be a little bit of a waste, because Hatterene can set up Trick... Well, it can try to set up Trick Room, but both of the mods here are faster. And, um, e and even if they weren't, this, the Sand is gonna KO at the end of the turn. But out comes this Machamp. And I think... Interestingly enough, I can Steel Spike here, and I can... Is it is it even worth it to Iron Defense here? Huh. Actually, what I, w I think it's better just to get as much damage as possible. And... Huh, what do I want to do here? I think... Huh, I don't know what I want to do here. I think I'll just play rough into it, just just for the damage. I think at this point, Klefki's done his job. I don't... Um, I think... So, okay, the, the problem here is that, um... Is that um, Machamp's G Max move is going to raise its critical hit chances? So maybe Iron Defense isn't the best place, isn't the best spot. I think if the case was that um, my Clefki was at max HP and still had the Citrus Spear intact, then it makes perfect sense. I think for me to want to Iron Defense here. But um, but the fact that I'm not Iron Defense up, or 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 sorry, the the, the fact that I'm already down a, a little bit of HP and I uh, took some damage. Sorry, and the fact that I ate my Citrus Berry already. I'm trying to focus on this match as much as I can. Um, probably means that I should just try to uh, deal as much damage to this Machamp as I can. So this is really interesting because now I'm incredibly tempted to... Now I'm incredibly tempted to Raw Hurricane into the Machamp slot. Um... And Klecky was honestly doing really respectable damage. Like, legitimately, honestly, super respectable damage. Although, it's going to be doing less damage because of the... Because of the... Steel Spike boost. But... But... I do think... I do think that this is going to put me in the best position, especially if I can bring... If I can maneuver in the Surf Edged to kind of deal with... I have to imagine Surfettes can come in and kind of manage um, what's left on the field here. And yeah, I'm totally down for 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 a raw hurricane into this thing. I think regardless, um, this is I'm um, getting enough damage onto the onto the Machamp is going to be my best kind of out here. Um, honestly, best case scenario might be if if Machamp goes down and he takes both my Pokemon with him. Um, although the Melmetal protects, that is bananas. Okay. Okay, that is very, very interesting. But we do get the play rough off for a little bit of damage. Now, I'd be very, very curious as to whether or not that's enough for Hurricane. No, it's not. Okay. Uh, that that was some wishful thinking on, on my part, but it does go for the Max Knuckle. Oh, this isn't even Gigantamax. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. Okay, so... Fun fact, I... I, I don't think I knew going into this um, season, but uh, it does actually look like um, trainers are, are allowed to either choose their, their Gigantamax or their um, non-G-Max versions of their Mons. So I uh, came into this assuming that this had to be Gig Gigantamax, but it did not in fact have to be Gigantamax. Now that looks like enough damage where Klefki Play Rough takes this thing out, and that'll allow... And that will allow... Um, something else to come in and 
honestly, that probably just allows my Vicavolt to kind of do some things. But I think I want to do this with... I can Heat Wave. I can Heat Wave here, right? I can Heat Wave and... No. That doesn't make... I don't think that makes sense. Actually, okay, okay, okay. I, I think I know what to do now. So, what I'm, what, what I'm gonna, the way they're going to try to play this is I'm going to Heat Wave and hopefully get two KOs here. And then, I also want to set up a spike with with my Klepki, which is going to KO the Hatterene on, 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 on entry. Which is then going to, um, I believe, leave it to last Mon Clawitzer. And then what I can do is go with one of my original strategies, which is get the Prankster Thunder Wave off on the, on the Clawitzer. And, and uh, be able to hex and then do as much damage as I can that way. But that should pick up both KOs. Um, it does. Okay. And then Klefki's going to pick up a spike KO, I believe, with on this Hatterene coming in. Unless I forgot that the Hatterene... I, I could have forgotten something. Um, and it's on the last turn of Psychic Terrain. So uh, that, that would have been for not if... Um, if uh, there was another turn of Psychic Terrain left, but uh, it kind of worked out for me as well as it could have. So, now I'm curious, on a standard-ass Clawitzer, if it is paralyzed, if it's paralyzed and I go for a Chandelure Hex, uh, that's a lot of damage. I think this should always be a KO. I believe it should be. So I'm going to click Hex, and I'm going to get the Thunder Wave off. Um, I, I think it should always be a KO after Spike. Uh, well, well, this is assuming max HP. If it's anything less than max HP, then it almost for sure should be. But um, if I have one Spike up, then it's over It's over 50% chance to KO. That is a KO. That's a 5-0 win. We desperately, desperately needed that. Uh, I, was, I was really... Um, I think I built um, a, a really interesting team for the type of team that he had. Um, once again, I'm very, very sorry about uh, the types of the types of delays that 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 we had to have. But um, yeah, like I said, I think I built the team that I had to for, for this type of matchup. It was very unlike what I what I wanted to bring, but I like the way that I thought through the team, right? And for the record, my initial plan was to lead Surfetched next to Vikavolt. And if he'd let off with the Ndidi next to the Hatterene, the plan would have been to close combat into the Ndidi, and then Specs Flash Cannon into the Hatterene, which should have KO'd the Hatterene most of the time. And I believe I had a pretty solid chance to be able to KO an Ndidi from full with just Max Attack, Adamant, Surfetched. So that was the plan. I really wanted to get off to a really strong start and prevent any Trick Rooms from, from happening. I somehow powered through the trick room. I really liked the Klefki set. I really liked um, a lot of the stuff that I was able to do. But that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been week two of the ABL. There will be more weeks of the ABL as well as more weeks of the GTL coming up really, really soon. But with that, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. And once again, out.